So, I've made seven videos here for you, a series of videos about cable selection. So, about the design and selection of the correct size cable for an installation. And if you look on the screen here, I've given a breakdown of what we're going to go through. So, step one to seven. Now, this is aimed at, uh, made for level two, 8202 learners. So, doing the electrical installation course, 8202, this is the level they make you do the cable selection to. On um, the expectations up to here for level two. So let's do this. Let's run through it quick now. So we're going to go through one to seven. We're going to calculate the design current. We're going to determine the rated current of our protected device. We're going to calculate the IZ, which is the current carrying capacity of the cable in the installed conditions. We're going to look at correction factors. We're going to select a cable using that value we get for our IZ. Identify installation methods and go through current capacity tables. And we're going to calculate volt drop, R1, R2, and ZS. And we're going to do full calculations and references to on-site guide and the requirements for electrical installations. That's the big brown book, that one. So let's go ahead and do step one. Let's look at the screen now for step one. Okay, so these are the two circuits we're going to take through this process. We've got a lighting circuit and we've got a radial circuit. Lighting circuit's feeding 830-watt LEDs and a radial circuit, fe um, which is feeding four dual socket outlets. Okay, let's have a quick look at these, these breakdowns. We're going to carry this information through and add to it as we go. Let's just look at this first one. So lighting circuit, we've got 830 watt LEDs. We've got a TNS system, 230 volt single phase installation. We've got the length, the installation method, what circuit breaker we're being issued with, ambient temperature, the type of cable we're going to use. And the same for the radial circuit. Now, all that information there is obviously relevant for us doing our cable selection. And you will notice that that's what we've been practicing in our sessions. We've been having scenarios like this and then picking the relevant information and putting that into the order so we can go through these steps. Right, let's speed this up and go for step one and calculate the design current for both these circuits. Okay, let's start on this side with our lighting circuit. So like we said, we've got a lighting circuit with 830 watt LEDs. That's really the only bit we're interested in at the moment, along with this 230 volts. So let's have a look what we're calculating here. So we're calculating our design current, which is our IB, isn't it? Okay, so we know that the IB is our design current, and that's going to be equal to the power rating of our circuit divided by the voltage. Now, how did I come up with that? Well, we're looking for the current. We need the power and the voltage. So look, you'll recognize this triangle we've done many, many times in our sessions, and there we go. That's all we're doing, aren't we? And we're looking for this value, so we just divide power by voltage. Okay, so let's do it on this side now. So our lights, lighting circuit, we've got, to work out our power rating, we've got 8 times 30 watt LEDs. So let's do 8 multiplied by 30, which is going to give us 240 watts. So that's our power rating for that circuit there. Okay, so let's do the actual calculation now. So our design current is going to be equal to 240 watts from this calculation divided by the voltage. So let's go for that. Let's put that in 230. When you punch that into your calculator, that's going to give you a value of 1.04. And it's going to be in amps, isn't it? Because it's for the design current. Perfect. So that's how easy it is to get the design current for a circuit when we've got a known load. Calculating design current with a circuit with known load. When I say known load, I mean this is a load on the circuit, isn't it? The uh, 30 watt LEDs. So that's done that side. Let's look over here. Now we've got two tables here. You've probably seen these while I've been talking. Now these are relevant for when we're doing a circuit with an unknown load. So when I say unknown load, I mean this is a radial circuit feeding four sockets. Okay. Everything else is pretty similar to this. We've got you know we've got a different earthing system. Yeah, that's okay. Same voltage. Um, none of this matters right now. Let's just go in here and look. Let's say this is in an office. We don't know what they're going to plug into these sockets, computers, a heater. We don't actually know, do we? Let's say it's in a domestic, like a house. So we don't know what they're going to plug into the sockets. So we have to go with an assumed load. And this assumed load's based on this bit of information here. And it's based on this bit of information here. So what protected device we're going to use and the length of the circuit. Let's look at this first table here. So this table, final circuit's using... Uh, socket outlets and connection units. Right, what we're looking at, three options, A1, A2, and A3. So we've got an A1 ring circuit, an A2 radial, an A3 radial. What we're looking at here, let's look at the difference between these columns and these actual options we've got to choose from. So we've got a ring circuit with a 30 or 32 using 2.5 mil. 
and you're allowed to cover 100 square metres if you look on that side. Similar for the A2 radial, except that's using 4 mil. Okay, it's not a ring circuit, it's a radial now, so we're using 4 mil cable. I'm allowed to cover 75 metres squared. This one looks like it might be suitable for us. We've got 20 metres, only four sockets, a very small circuit. So let's look at this. We can. It's definitely going to be less than 50 metres squared. Okay, so it's saying if we're left than 50 metres squared, we could use an A3 radial, this one down here. And it means we're going to use a protected device of 20 amps and a 2.5 millimetre cable. Okay, so what we're saying here is that we can choose, based on this information, we can say that our go down to this table and say if we use a 20 amp protected device and keep it less than 50 meters square, the, the circuit itself, and we know our protected device is a 61009 RCBL, let's go down here and find our assumed load. This table here is the assumed load table. This is in the on-site guide as well. Both of these, look the references up here for where this is and where this is. So let's look on here. So what have we got? Let's look for a 61009 with a 20 amp protected device. So here's the rating of our protected device, this column, here's a protected device. So go down here, let's find, we've got 61009 here and here. Okay, so I'm looking at this section here and I'm looking here. This looks like it's suitable, this. Okay, so I've circled a few bits there that we're going to look at. So we've got 61009 RCBO as our protected device. The rating of our protected device is 20 amps, which is what we've just been told we should do if our circuit's this length. 20 amp protected device for a radial. And our assumed load is going to be 16 amps. So look now, we can take that assumed load and write that down as our design current. So our design current for this side is going to be 16 amps. Okay, so that's just for a radial circuit or a ring circuit. If we do not know what they're going to plug in there, we take an assumed load. Now we're still going to take this value and put it through the whole process. We're going to add correction factors to it and see if it'll still work with a 2.5 millimeter cable on a 20 amp protected device. Well that's good now, that's both sides of this done for our design current, so let's move on to step two.